Hi, I'm John, and in this video I'm going to be shooting expired film, and we'll be comparing it with a more robust version of the same film to see how differently they behave. So my friend kindly gave me these three rolls of Fujifilm Superior Extra 400s, which were previously owned by her parents, and she told me that the last time her parents to use film to take photos was back when she was born in 1997. So I think it's safe to say that these films are expired for at least 20 years. Because films get less sensitive to light over time, there's this rule of thumb where you have to overexpose your film by one stop per decade it's expired. One stop of light is the increment used to indicate to either double or half the amount of light you let into the camera when you take a photo. So this means that I should be overexposing these rolls of films by at least two stops to get a robust looking image. But because I'm not sure of the precise year of expiry of these films, and also to test its usable range, I'm going to be testing them under different levels of exposures. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be using a healthier version of the same type of film, so for those interested in seeing how this behaves under different levels of exposures in particular, this video might kill two birds with one stone for you. So today I'm going to be shooting at this bridge by Tamagawa River because this place has a wide range of light ranging from the highlights in the skies and rivers to the shadows under the bridge. So I thought it'd make for a good image to be able to see how different exposure levels affect these areas of light. So I'm going to take the first photo at the correct exposure and then increase it by a stop until I overexpose by six stops. For those wondering, I'm going to be using the Canon EOS 5 with the 40mm pancake lens for this test. So I got the films back from the lab today, so let's take a look at how they turned out. So this first image is correctly exposed, but as you can see in the expired film, it's really underexposed, and the shadows are really muddy and green. You can see the digital noise from the scanner. Um, there's a purplish blue tint in the midtones and the highlights, or the brighter areas of the image. And yeah, compared to that, the robust film looks really good, which should be the case, so nothing surprising there. So this next image, this is one stop overexposed, but we still see the muddy shadows and the tinted highlights, and there's not much of a difference in the robust film as well. Pretty much the same with the second stop overexposed. It is getting a bit brighter overall in both expired and robust films, but you can still see the muddy shadows and the tinted highlight at this stage. This is the third stop overexposed. Okay, now we can see somewhat of a difference compared to the previous ones. Um, there's less green muddiness in the shadows, and the tint and the highlights became less purple. The image just looks cooler. Okay, now we're actually seeing a proper image of the bridge. The muddiness in the shadow is almost completely gone. It looks, it looks nice. So this is the fifth stop overexposed. I mean, it's a nice looking image. <laughs> it's just that the white balance might be a bit off, but otherwise it looks pretty good. The robust film on the other hand is um, suffering from overexposure. So you can see the highlights getting really bright. So now we're at six stops overexposed. Um, both images look overexposed at this point. Um, but I'd say the image from the expired film is much more usable compared to the robust film at six stops overexposed. But I'm not sure when you would overexpose six stops when you're using a robust film. So, so these are some other shots that I took. And as a whole, they followed the same pattern. The robust film looks, honestly, it looks good throughout while the expired film starts to perform decently from four stops and above. 
So I guess what we can take away from this is that in general you should overexpose your film, but the amount you have to overexpose by really depends on the expiry of the film. So if you're lucky and have multiple rolls with the same or similar expiry, I think it'd be safer to test one roll out before using it for something a bit more intentional. Additionally, I think it'd be a bit risky using expired film for fully automatic cameras since it usually only exposes correctly to the box speed, which will most likely give you underexposed images, as we saw in the examples. But I guess at the end of the day, it all depends on how you want your image to look. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope this video helps as a reference to whenever you come across expired film or you decide to shoot expired film yourself. And I'll probably be uploading more videos, so I'll see you again whenever that is.